Good morning. So, um, we're, the stories came right after the meditation chant because we're going to start this portion of the um, service ceremony talk, whatever, with um, a meditation, and then we'll we'll just move into the rest of this this morning. Now I'd like to invite you to start out with to do something that would feel like um, cleansing, purifying, opening yourself. Sure, yeah, the Lord is offering to play a little while we do this. That would be wonderful. So sometimes people do this with wa drops of water or they do it with, with smudge, but we're just gonna do it with our hands and you can do anything you want. You can kind of smooth the energy around you and your arms and legs. And, body and you might want to take your hands and just for a moment cover your face just feel the energy and feel and just love your face love yourself so just take a moment And as you're ready, you may, you can choose to close your eyes or open them and rest them softly on some of our beautiful flowers that are here today and breathe deeply. It's May. Yay, it's May. <laughs> oh, just feel that. Feel yourself in the midst of the opening of spring, the back and forth that comes with the cold days and the warm days and the rain and the sunshine. And just take that in. Bask in your divine nature. Everything is part of our divine nature. Listen to the birds. In your mind's eye, see the growth, new growth on the trees and bushes. Smell the flowers and delight in their bright colors. What does the heart of spring mean to you in your life? Take a moment to feel into this question. Take one more deep breath. And when you're ready, return to this space and be aware that divinity is in us and all around us. Welcome to our celebration of May Day, also known as Beltane. Um, it's a time of joy, a time of contemplation, too. It's a time of honoring the union of the divine masculine and feminine within ourselves and in the natural world. It's a time of passion, but also of patience. It's a time of the opening of tender buds and honoring our tender hearts. There's a tradition of dancing the maypole, and we just happen to have this lovely peace pole in our midst, ready, waiting for us. It's a sensual time. 
as dancing often can be. We get to awaken our senses in the same way that the earth's creatures and seeds are awakening. It's a time of new life. There are birds building nests in the eaves of my house. I see them flying back and forth. And if you sit and looking out my living room, you see these little wisps of whatever they are, straw, grasses, hanging down, waiting for the baby birds. Bees are already starting to go from flower to flower, pollinizing. And of course, baby animals are being born. So if we dare say it, we could say it's a sexual time, especially if we can feel that word as more than just physical, feeling of passion, of joy, of delight. We can express it in body, mind, spirit, or all three. From a website called druidry.org, I got this quote. It is hard to resist loving this time of year when everything feels glorious, gloriously alive and renewed. The blossoms abundant, the green of the trees, that special shade that our eyes seem magnetically drawn to. And in the spiral dance, this is my well-worn copy written by Starhawk. She says, life is twined in a spiral web and all of nature is renewed. We meet in the time of flowering to dance the dance of life. So to kind of get you ready for what is to come, at the end of my time here, we will be doing what is called dancing the maypole. And um, there are 10 ribbons, so there's room for 10 people who might like to take a ribbon and participate in this dance. So be thinking about whether that one of them might be you. Um, we will get, there will be instructions, <laughs> it's not, and it's not very hard. Um, so, and if you would rather, you also could take a drum or a rhythm instrument because we'll be drumming, clapping, shaking while people are dancing and you can dance while you're doing that too, or you can sit, it's all, many choices. Um, in the uh, spiral dance, Starhawk, let me get my basket, um, goes through what a Beltane ceremony might look like. And one of the things that she suggests is one by one, we each choose a ribbon of the appropriate color, saying aloud what it is for. I choose the red of blood for my health. I choose sky blue for flights of imagination. I choose green for growth. So um, I have a basket, ribbons, lots of colors. So I'm gonna just pass it around and while we go on, um, please pick a color and say, you can say it quietly aloud or just inside to yourself what the color represents to you. And while that's getting started, um, if I could ask you to rise, we're going to do what's called casting the circle, which is kind of creating a sacred and safe and welcoming space for all the divine energies. And um, can I use mm -hmm. that? It's okay, Eric? Okay, because I'm gonna be turning, so do I need to turn it on? It's already on. Okay, there I am. All right, so if we could start by facing the south. As I speak the energies of the directions, I should say the energies of the directions, depending on um, what group uh, comes to the end, where said, um, what, what, what group, what tribe may be different. So the ones I speak may be different than the ones you know. Um, please feel free to silently add your own qualities and any energies you want to call in. So. I call to the direction of the south, to the energies 
of water to the energies of flow and um, bringing in all the necessary cleansing and the dancing waves and the water that is our bodies and sustains our bodies, all the energy of beauty of the oceans. I call on you to be with us today. Thank you. Ho. Oh. Or blessed be. Okay. So now we're going to turn to, we're going clockwise. So back of the room, which is west. And I call on the energies of the west, the energies of earth, to be with us today. The energies of stability, of the place that we live, the beauty of the place that sustains us and gives us life. I call on all the energies of the plant world that come forward from the earth at this time. I call on the darkness of caves where we can go and explore and get new insights and intuitions. I call on earth and all its energies to be with us. Blessed be. To the north, calling in the energy of the north, the energy of air, the energy of the breeze that blows, that brings the warm air to us at this time of year and brings some cold air too blows through our minds to bring us new ideas, bring to clear out the cobwebs that maybe have grown over the winter and allow us to move freely in our bodies and minds, thoughts and ideas. I call on the energies of the North to be with us. Blessed be. And Sorry to turn my back on the camera, but only for a moment, the energies of the East. I call on the energies of the East to be with us, the energy of the sun, energy of the warm air coming in, the energy of the beautiful bright sky and the longer days, and the sun that warms the earth and warms the small seeds so that they begin to rise up above the ground to bring us the harvest that will be coming in a few months time. I call upon the energies of the East, the energy of spirit and of making our decisions with the help of divine grace. Thank you for being here. And you may be seated. We'll call also the energy of the center, which you can call God, goddess, all that is, great spirit, divinity. So just take a deep breath and bring in whatever that energy's name is for you. Oh, we're going to switch back. There we go. Besides all that we've already spoken about in, in what Beltane is, it's also a midpoint. It is actually the halfway point between the beginning of spring in mid-March and the beginning of summer in late June. So we're six weeks in from spring and six weeks away from, from um, the solstice, the longest day and shortest night. And we're in between in a lot of different ways. So you can think about the weather. It's like sometimes it's 80 and sometimes it's 30, not 20 anymore mostly, That's, thank heavens. Um, you can think about, you know, that we have more daylight returning, but it's not all the way there yet. Um, the world is bursting forth in beauty 
my gosh, one day this week I was driving down my street and I drove and it's like all of a sudden, it's like seemed like all of a sudden, all the little green, light green flowers were up on the, the maple trees. It's like, I don't think they were there yesterday. <laughs> and here they are. So we're kind of in between <laughs> seeing the world as the, the bare branches that it's been and beginning to see the, the flowering and the, the beauty of the, of the spring greenery. Um, and then in another way, the world is bursting forth in beauty, but also at the same time, I can never seem to totally forget the fact that people are causing the world and each other great suffering. So that's another kind of halfway point that I inhabit. And I wanted to um, share a poem that has to do with halfway that is, um, actually when I uh, mentioned this a couple weeks ago, Annie came running up and recited it with me. <laughs> so I don't know, Annie, you want to come running up and recite it with me? <laughs> I don't know how many of you, um, probably most of us read or had read to us Winnie the Pooh um, long ago. So A.A. A. Milne also wrote poetry. And I had a, an a elementary school teacher who loved these poems. So this poem is called, I always thought it was called a halfway up, but it's called halfway down. So halfway down the stairs is a stair where I sit. There isn't any other stair quite like it. I'm not at the bottom. I'm not at the top. So this is the stair where I always stop. Halfway up the stairs isn't up and it isn't down. It isn't in the nursery, and it isn't in the town. And all sorts of funny thoughts run around my head. It isn't really anywhere. It's somewhere else instead. <laughs> we, we discovered we had both memorized that as children. <laughs> oh, and and the you know the poem is lighthearted and fun, um, and that is also part of this season is some lightheartedness, some 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 joy, some oh my gosh to go outside without a jacket on, you know without having to put layer after layer on to just be able to be take a walk. Um, so I want to see if I can kind of bring us into some of the sense of this in-between space, um, sometimes called liminal space. And it has a lot of different meanings to it. But um, one part has to do with some things are over. Some things haven't started yet. Sometimes it's a time of waiting, a time of wondering, because we don't necessarily know what's coming next. Um, and it's interesting to think of our hearts, if you know the sh system of chakras, of energy centers that run up and down the body, our hearts are in that midpoint. The lower chakras, one, two, and three, are the chakras that are most impact the physical body. And five, six, and seven are about our connection to spirit and that system of thought. And the heart sits right in the middle. So when you think of the heart of spring, you think of your own heart and what is your heart calling you to do? How is your heart connecting the physical plane that we live on and what spirit is bringing in to you perhaps through um, just little glimpses or like little glimpses of fairies, little glimpses of some kind of, of thought or something new that you might want to try. Um, so I want to just have a, another just real short period of meditation um, and ask you to close your eyes and go inside and be, just imagine that you are with or you are your inner magical self. And imagine that you're sitting someplace where you can look all around, so you're in the middle of something. Maybe you're in the middle of a field of 
flowers, poppies or sunflowers. Or maybe you're on the beach and you just can see the sand and the ocean. Or maybe you're halfway up a mountain. Or maybe like I always think of that poem as being Christopher Robin. Maybe you're like Christopher Robin sitting on a beautiful staircase on the middle step. And just look all around. Look what, and see what you see, including looking above and below. And look behind. Where have you been? Where are you? What, what has happened either recently or long ago that has brought you to this space, to this liminal space, this middle ground. And then just allow yourself to be aware of what is ahead, even if you have no clue what it actually is. Just allow that, at the energy of what's coming, what the possibilities are. what your heart and spirit are calling for you to notice. If you want, take a moment to call your guides, the fairies, anybody from the spirit world to help guide you into what is to come. When you're ready, take a breath, open your eyes, bring, bring what you have found back with you. So the thing about living in between the lower and upper chakras, living in the heart, our heart of spring, is that we live on a planet of paradoxes and of opposites and of contradictions. And so then the, the key, I think, becomes finding peace in the midst of chaos, finding our own place from which we can take the next step and the next step and that we can listen to the guides that may be whispering in our ear. And we can look around and see what clues we can get from the natural world. We live with passion, but we have to temper it with patience. And uh, there's a quote I wanted to read that Delith, I want to check time because I know I, we started a little later but I want to make sure I'm not going too long okay okay well, we want, I'm just going to go for a couple more minutes and then we got to do this, so, which will only take, won't take very long either, but let me. So this is the book of runes. I don't know if any of you are familiar with runes, but they're little, they're symbols, ancient symbols that you can paint on stones or shells or, and then you put them in some kind of container and you draw one and you see what energy comes forward for you. So in this case, I didn't draw one, but I picked one. Um, is actually a rune called Jira, 
which is harvest or fertile season or one year. And I'm just going to read this a little bit here. So it's a rune of beneficial outcomes. It applies to any activity or endeavor to which you are committed. Be aware, however, that no quick results can be expected. A span of time is usually involved, hence the key words one year, symbolizing a full cycle before the reaping harvest or deliverance. You have prepared the ground and planted the seed, or in this case, we are preparing the ground and about to plant our seeds. Now you must cultivate with care. To those whose labor has a long season, a long coming to term, Jira offers encouragement of success. Know that the outcome is in the keeping of providence and continue to persevere. Remember the old story about the farmer who was so eager to assist his crops that he went out at night and tugged on the new shoots? <laughs> there is no way to push the river. Equally, you cannot hasten the harvest. Be mindful that patience is essential for the recognition of your own process, which in its season leads to the harvest of the self. So if I were going to use, find one phrase to talk about the heart of spring, I would say that's it. It's the patience and the cultivating of our inner worlds, knowing that the harvest of the self will be forthcoming. All right. One, one more sentence and then we're gonna do our um, maple. So from this book, which is called 365 Dial, comes this quote. Eventually you will reach a point where the quiescence of contemplation and the activeness of living are integrated. Then there is no anxiety about whether one is living a spiritual life or not. You realize that it is all part of the same seamless whole. So, if it's all, all part of the same seamless whole, then what, do, what can we do but celebrate? <laughs> so, if you would like to be part of Dancing the Maypole, please go forward and take a ribbon. <laughs> we don't have to have 10 people. We can have whatever number we have. But, um, and if you would like to, if you're not doing that, if you would like to have something to make noise with, feel free to do that. We're going to make our own music. We're going to, and you can clap if you'd rather do something. Do that. All right. Looks okay. We got. Oh, I 
Chester. New song. Celebrate your heart and your spirit. Celebrate your life while you live it, even when it's hard to do. Celebrate the best of you. Celebrate your dreams and your visions. Celebrate the love you've been given. Cherish all that you've been through. Celebrate the best of you. One more thing you can do after the service or whenever if you want is that little ribbon that you to that you have um, the the tradition is we would have a nice big bonfire going right and you would jump over it and you, you would it, as you did that you would you would either release whatever that the, the energy that came to you with that color that you picked, or you would bring in something new. So we're not going to be jumping over anything, but you can just take your little ribbon and wave it over the candle. So a symbolic jumping. And you can do this symbolically right now, or if you want to actually come up later and use and wave it over. But you're mentioned you're waving it over. And whatever it is you need to release, or you would like to bring in to your energy. Allow that to happen. So thank you all for being part of this May Day Beltane celebration. And I want to teach you how the, um, the Wiccan tradition that I learned of how you end a ceremony. Besides, first we just release the spirits. And we're just going to do that like that. We can do a long ceremony. We're just letting, letting the energy go that created this sacred space. And then we say, I'll say it, you repeat, Mary meet, and Mary part, and Mary meet again. Blessed be. Thank you. <laughs>